Fenbendazole for cancer? See why the evidence ranks D plus and why the research quality is so incredibly poor. We're grading the clinical value and utility of fenbendazole and the science behind it. We did a long form video on this, lots of data, dived into every single animal study. That's all right here. But it's a lot of information and many people don't want to go through all that. So today we're breaking it down, keeping it really simple. And Hello I'm and welcome to Elevating Cancer Treatment, where we explain the science and debunk myths to help you navigate your health journey. My background is a little different. Beyond educating about cancer, I'm actually designing new drugs that are defining the future of oncology. This direct, hands-on experience offers me a very different perspective of how these cancer treatments work on the body, interact with the cancer cells, and cause side effects. And these are insights that I'm excited to share with you. If that sounds interesting, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. And please share it if you find it useful. I'm Dr. Jay Chaplin. An important reminder, I'm a PhD, not an MD. The information in this video is education, and it's not medical advice. Every cancer is unique, and no general information applies to everyone. Please remember that. Always consult with your healthcare provider for guidance on your specific situation. And two quick things. First, as a thank you for being here, I've created a free resource, 10 Things to Elevate Your Chemo Journey, which you can download from the link below. And second, by signing up, you'll also get updates on that innovative cancer treatment I'm working on. I'm confident it represents a significant advancement in immunotherapy. So please take a moment, download your free guide, and join us in shaping the future of cancer treatment. So in terms of the science, Yes, there is a mechanism for the anti-cancer activity of fenbendazole. It's similar to other known and used chemo drugs. But every one of those are given by IV, not just an injection, an infusion, and they all make you very sick. Fenbendazole is taken orally, it's not for human use. And only around 25% of what you swallow gets into your body at all. That's why it's great on skin, or in the intestinal tract for getting rid of parasites. It doesn't get into your system much. It kills worms in your intestines, but it doesn't get into your bloodstream. Now, yes, it does kill cancer cells at very high doses in culture dishes, which looks good. But in order to get to the bottom end of those amounts, the absolute minimum, you'd need to take four grams of fenbendazole every single day. While on the internet, the Tippins protocol, we'll talk about that later, is about 220 milligrams, or about a quarter of a gram, every other day. That's more than a 40 time difference between what people say they're taking and what you would need to take to have any effect. So that's a big difference. And it does seem positive, but the dosages are completely wrong and they're almost impossible to attain. So that's an issue right there. And then the five animal studies were very mixed. Two showed absolutely no effect whatsoever. That's with a drug injected. And three showed slowed growth. None of them shrank tumors. Animal studies were of mixed quality, odd dosing approaches, odd schedules. And again, under some circumstances, there is a little bit of evidence, it's bad, but a little bit of evidence to support a slowing of tumor growth. But that evidence is not solid, and two of the five studies don't show any effect at all, even with massive doses, even when injected. So overall, the science is hard to interpret, and at best only supports a slowing of growth rather than a killing of tumors or elimination which everybody is claiming. Okay, the interpretation of the data is just flat out bad. It's just bad. Consistently, the results of these studies are reported positively based on that cell line killing, but they don't take into account the dosing issues we just talked about or the lack of any efficacy in the animal models, which is really obvious from the data. Nobody talks about the difference between the internet story reported dosing and the miraculous efficacy people are claiming without any proof versus the tested and published dosing and efficacy. They're wildly different. They just say in these studies that there's promise when the promise is very, very small and with huge uncertainties. So the scientific basis is bad, but not abysmal. It's not as bad as ivermectin. There might be some little bit of promise there. And the interpretation is about as bad as it can possibly get. Here's what that looks like on the first graph, science versus interpretation. So in terms of clinically meaningful, Again, there isn't any evidence so far in 
any format to support cancer treatment, actual treatment. Just maybe, possibly, uncertainly, a slowing of tumor growth. If you were in end-stage cancer and everything else had failed, this might make sense as a last option, or as an addition on top of an effective treatment regimen, but not as a replacement, which is what most people are talking about. While there are lots of positive stories, none of them are verified, and if even a small fraction of them were actually true, they should be incredibly easy to verify and publish as case report series. Treating doctors can do this very easily. Now, there are some published case reports, and all of the published case reports involve concurrent use of other therapies. People were on chemo or on hormone blockers or on immunotherapies at the exact same time. And these are drugs that are known to occasionally produce complete and durable remissions, cures. And that includes Joe Tippins, the guy who dropped this story. He had that in there during the initial interviews, but he took out the fact that he was on an immunotherapy at the same time in later interviews. So clinical utility, maybe for slowing, not for getting rid of it. Achievable? Like ivermectin, fenbendazole is really easy to get and take. As long as you're willing to take veterinary-only medicine in unsafe dosages and risk poisoning yourself. And I really have to hammer that home. Folks argue on the internet, I've gotten plenty of comments, that both ivermectin and fenbendazole are harmless and preferable to chemotherapy. But that is provably not true. I've got a ton of links down below. While there is only one reported death from fenbendazole itself, there are many reports of severe liver damage, and most people take it in combination with ivermectin. And ivermectin has a significant and long history of killing people who take it in high dosages or for long periods of time, which everyone on these protocols does. I'll include links to those, again, down below. Please look at those before just accepting this story. They've never hurt anyone. It's just not true. While we're discussing combinations, another thing that folks like to say is that ivermectin and fenbendazole synergize with each other and have great efficacy when you take them together. But in order to do that, they have to actually work. That's what synergize means. Two drugs that work independently, this one works, this one works, happen to work much better together. There is zero evidence of ivermectin showing any benefit for cancer in any system tested, and only the weakest benefit even possible, still unlikely, but possible, for fenbendazole, or nothing plus probably nothing, to suddenly be more effective than standard of care isn't synergy. That's pure magic. The only synergy that will be happening here when you combine ivermectin and fenbendazole is faster and more severe liver damage. So, possible though unlikely clinical benefit limited to slowing of tumor growth. That's not the I'm cured stories on the internet. Some small potential benefit with significant risk of liver damage. Easily achievable, but doses required would be 20 times what people report. That becomes difficult to actually swallow, literally. It makes them difficult. Here's how these two things, clinical value and achievability, look together on their graph. So overall, yes. Fenbendazole might slightly slow tumor growth at high and probably toxic doses. It is understandable to try it if everything else has failed. However, folks, they like to start here rather than ending here. There are almost certainly other off-label treatment options for you. And even artemisinin has a better track record than fenbendazole. You can buy that on Amazon. Please don't latch on to fenbendazole first, because the risk just isn't worth it unless there's absolutely nothing left to lose. And there's almost certainly something else that works. We've talked about a number of different complementary therapies that work. Artemisinin is good. There are many other things. You have other options. Fenbendazole is not the only thing. So, on an F to A grading scale, fenbendazole ranks a D plus for the combination of bad science, even worse interpretation, low clinical value, and achievability, but it doesn't really matter when the other three are garbage. That looks like this. Please, if you are facing treatment issues, if you need to do something else, if you have failed on standard of care, do some research. Follow us. There are many options. 
There are complementary therapies that work. There are off-label treatments that work. There are many things that work. Fenbendazole is not one of them. Ivermectin is not one of them. Certainly not the two together. They are more dangerous, not more beneficial. Beyond these videos, if you need more personalized guidance or a deeper dive into specific treatments to have your treatment be as effective as possible, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and medical advocacy. I'm also in the process of developing an exclusive video series that breaks down each cancer treatment and drug in detail, along with interferences to avoid and ways to optimize for the ideal results. You can find information on both of these resources on our website, which is linked down below. Again, if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, click the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel for more science-based cancer insights.